Welcome uh, to this uh, e-drilling webinar. Uh, today we are going to have a, a webinar talking about the 2017 roadmap towards drilling the perfect well. Uh, my name is uh, Morten Svensson. Together with me I have uh, my CEO, Tony Farnes. Uh, just in some practical things before we start, uh, I have added uh, a, a PDF of the PowerPoint in the handout folder of the GoToWebinar application, so you can download it afterwards and, and have it afterwards. There's also a, a question box in the GoToWebinar application, so if you have any questions during the webinar, please feel free to, to ask them and we will have a around uh, with the questions in the end. So um, I think maybe uh, Tony then you can uh, st start. Thank you Morten. Uh, my name is Tony. I am the CEO of Drilling as Morten said. Uh, before we dive into the specifics of today's webinar which is the 2017 roadmap uh, as some of you are new to e-drilling I would like to spend a few minutes on some of the aspects that are guiding the, our development every year and not just 17, because Morten will cover the 17 specifics. So from, uh, as you can see on the slide, from the early beginning, our vision has guided our technology development. What we offer to the market, the releases we add every year, they're all addressing the list that you see on the right. You can read it yourself, but I would like to call out one of them that I am particularly proud of. So ever since our launch of our pre-operations and training solution, Wellsim and Wellsim Hydro, uh, together with our partner Oiltech, any company that have drilled their well in simulator using these technologies have had no significant incidents. We intended to, to stay that way and every release of Wellsim works towards cementing our vision of serial incidents, also in 17 of course. So the first five on the list has been on there since the inauguration of e-drilling back in 2008. Uh, we added digitalization of drilling operations at the bottom uh, last year to basically just to address the number one buzzword in the industry. And not that it's needed because being a software company, we have worked towards this goal every year and we have been helping our customers and users digitalize every day since. But now it's up there. So way back in the day, uh, and that alludes to me being an old man, in the late 80s and early 90s, to be more precise, uh, marked the start of what is e-drilling today and our development. I had less gray hair back then, but I still remember the first meeting I attended with the research agency. Uh, so this was in high tech, fresh after having invented smart drilling instrumentation, the cyber base, and what is now coined the, the, the cyber drilling. We already had a vision for the next frontier. Uh, luckily, we found uh, people there who shared the same thinking. Uh, so, sorry, uh, our vision then, back then, uh, was um, was early days. But our vision then was to the ability to see things down hole before they were happening. You know, in a way, being ahead of the bit. Uh, we thought about the ability to see things that really could not see. We were looking for a solution where what you saw was exactly what was down the hole so that your, your mind started to think differently about the threats and the implications of decisions. And also, some of customers, but even back then, they wanted a solution and we agreed that prompted collaborative decision making. Which brings me to our overall roadmap, not the 17 one, but the one that has been guiding us ever since. Uh, the development and verification of the models since uh, the late 80s and 90s have uh, made our early vision obsolete. Not that our software uh, could not deliver on the 3D visualization, not at all, but it could do so much more. Uh, as with uh, cyber drilling, technology maturity and technology adoption are not in sync, as we allude to on this slide with uh, the dotted lines. But with an ever-increasing user base and list of customer, the industry are now at a tipping point. 
uh, which you will also see in our uh, 2017 uh, technology roadmap. Drill well and simulator and advanced monitoring are already mature technologies and the most innovative EMP com companies, the one we're working the closest with, are asking us to move on towards more self-detection and automatic monitoring. So whenever we think, well, this slide is busy, so you can, uh, I think we are giving out the slide afterwards. So uh, it's busy, so don't, uh, don't, you don't need to read it now. But basically, I, I have it here because whenever we think about software development, every single day, we think about addressing the industry's challenges, which are listed here, uh, which is the dynamic picture. But we also think about the drilling process as a whole, hence the, the, the green thing in the middle, and not necessarily just the standalone uh, workflows. So what I mean by that is that we are developing, uh, if we are developing a feature to address something in the planning phase, we think about how we can develop this and at the same time make it applicable to one or more or all of the other phases of the drilling process. Because our belief is that an integrated solution uh, for the entire drilling process are beneficial to, to you guys listening and to all our other customers out there. Um, many reasons for that, in my opinion, some of the most important ones. Uh, by doing this, you have a single uh, source of well information in any meetings you have, morning meetings, engineering meetings, and so on. You have one model fits all, uh, which basically means that you're using the same models throughout the well life cycle. Uh, and for an IT guy, think about it as seamlessly transferring um, throughout the different phases, the software. And all parts, and that's our vision again on this part, is to integrate and communicate constantly on a platform, a technology platform, from which you can manage and measure, but also track all of the data coming from the well. Some of you who attended the eDrilling 8 launch webinar uh, have seen this before, so we're not going to cover it in, in, um, in too much detail. Uh, but, uh, but everything I just said, uh, which kind of guides our development at all times, uh, but every quarter, every day, or every year, we try to focus in our development in on certain call it highlight areas. Um, sometimes, sometimes there are areas where our users tells us that our solutions are lacking something, something that it doesn't do correctly or something it should do differently. Other times there are areas that our customers tells us that uh, there is no solution in the market that covers this today. Or, which is very often the case, that existing solutions are not really meeting their current needs and, and definitely not their future needs. And other reasons sometimes should uh, could be regulatory, uh, could be incidents in the industry, which prompts the focus change. But every year we kind of, uh, so, so the process we have, every year we decide these spotlight areas together with our users and our customers, which includes our uh, current customers, but also com companies that are, we think about as our future customers that are leading on in the industry. So this is a process, and some of you might think that, why do we do this? Because this is a process that takes time and put a re restraint on our resources. And, um, but we think by doing it this way, we end up with new solutions. Uh, we end up with new releases um, that are relevant to the industry as a whole. Uh, they benefit every A&P company, all the service companies, all the operators, and not just a few. So that's why we uh, go through this process. In 2016, our technology spotlight was risk overview, well diagnostics, <coughs> sorry, seamless integration, and wellbore construction future-proof. Uh, seamless integration has, of course, always been a technology 
guideline of ours, but to be ahead of this curve that I mentioned earlier, the digitalization wave that the leading EMP companies in the world are now riding, we made sure in our eDrilling 8 release to be way ahead of that wave. For those who um, for those who kind of missed our 2016 webinar on the e drilling eight or missed one of our other presentations on it, uh, you can you can get our contact later. You can contact us for more information, or you can go to the same website where this will be posted and watch a recorded yeah uh, version of that. Uh, it's recorded and it's available on YouTube, so uh, you will get them. A link to our uh, uh, YouTube channel. So basically, there you find the uh, eDrilling 8, which was a major launch of the 8th version of our software portfolio. So you see uh, now you see uh, what's going to be the focus for the remainder of this webinar. Um, these our development is of course not limited to these four areas. But these are our four main focus areas going into this year, and we're already into this year. Um, these are what we see um, and what the industry leaders see, as well as what our users and customers have been asking for. So here is Morten to guide you through more details on this. Yeah, you, you see the, uh, this, the spotlights here on the slides. It's all about self-detection, well construction advanced well control and live well support. So I think we'll just jump into it and, and, and have a look at what we are picking. <clears throat> so when it comes to self-detection, as you remember the spotlight from 2016 was also about uh, diagnostics and, and stuff like that. And, and today we have a lot of automatic diagnostics on tripping speed monitoring, washout detection, hole cleaning uh, issues, stuck pipe issues, volume control, and also on kind of ECD versus the pressure window and so on. So, so the goal for 2017 is to expand the self-detection part and run our system or the real-time system into an automatic uh, when it comes to calibration of the models uh, and also to have automatic operational advisory and just not just kind of have a warning that something is going to happen, but also kind of give advisory on how to uh, solve the problem that is uh, uh, reaching you. Uh, and also to actually uh, expand the diagnostics and do more on uh, measurement versus simulations uh, and to see where uh, what's happening in the well. So <clears throat> even though we have a very uh, good and uh, <clears throat> system for diagnostics in the real-time system, we are looking at getting it even more and more and more advanced into the next year, which is or the 2017. Uh, when it comes to well construction, we, we don't have anything that uh, has to, as, as the head spotlight said, it was about uh, casing uh, design. And today we, we don't do anything in that area. But we would like to start there, and, and what we are looking at there is to do semi-automatic generation of the casing design. That we automatically suggest a design of the casing uh, that would uh, support, uh, uh, that would be suitable for your well. Of course, it needs to be semi-automatic because uh, every now and then uh, uh, there are things in the uh, internal. <coughs> procedures in oil companies where you have uh, your own ways of doing stuff. But the whole idea behind here is to do the dynamic simulations on the burst loads, collapse loads and actual loads. And doing kind of uh, hydraulic simulations and together with the temperature modeling here, uh, we are pretty sure that we can uh, do uh, some very <clears throat> groundbreaking work here on when it comes to casing design. So just to butt in, uh, so of, of, of this, this year's four spotlights, we have in, in three of the areas, they are um, uh, the roadmap of uh, existing products that uh, are in the market being used by uh, users and customers all around the world. For this specific case, this is uh, something we have been 
listening to and, and heard over over time from a lot of our uh, existing customers, but also on, on other customers, that uh, this is a solution that is kind of missing in the industry. Although there are some solutions that are doing it in a way, but not meeting uh, the needs, uh, especially not the future needs of these companies. So it's a big decision for us uh, to kind of go into a new, uh, looking into a new area, and we are currently working very, very closely with some of our customers on how to architect and design and start this. Yeah, so it's part of also kind of getting, because we also have a lot of, uh, <coughs> excuse me, customers that's asking for a one-stop solution instead of using uh, a lot of different applications to do the value planning or the value construction. Uh, and so we are kind of moving towards that way that uh, in, in kind of not in 2017, but in, in the next years, we would like to provide as much as possible as part of the entire value planning process. <coughs> So, and the next spotlight is the advanced uh, well control. And uh, as you, those of you who have been following us for some webinars and know about our technology has already seen a lot of what we do here on advanced well control. And, and, and the key points that we are working on there is uh, the uh, well control evaluation and kick tolerance. Uh, and, and where we are use, utilizing our dynamic hydraulic models with uh, the dynamic temperature modeling inside it. And, and kind of what we have been doing there is that we have been doing a lot of work on benchmarking this against PWD measurements, but also uh, uh, against other models. So I was thinking maybe I could just run a, a short simulation here just to kind of, uh, so we can do something interactive as well. Uh, what we have here is our well plan our tool and I have opened up my well control evaluation uh, module and I have set up a simulation. Uh, I'm just going to press play on it so it will start uh, and so we can talk while we are doing the dynamic temp pre-circulation phase. So now we are uh, doing a pre-circulations to get a realistic temperature in the well. And here in the start I have set up my uh, start up parameters with the depths. Uh, I could also set up that I drill into a reservoir or pumping. I have a fluid in my well. Uh, this is one of the fluids that I have in the system with a density and reference temperature. I also have which was some reservoir data here, but it's uh, it, the depth is the most important because I set up my influx to be uh, driven by intensity instead of the uh, reservoir pressure. And I've set that up to be a, 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 a it doesn't it's not uh, limited the volume of the reservoir, but uh, it's uh, it's a huge uh, reservoir. I have my pit alarm level, so now we are waiting for kick. So now we are in the phase that we are waiting for my surface pit alarm to reach one cubic meter. I can look at the plot there at the same time. I have my uh, the. the Maroon color, brown color here is my pit gain. As you see it down here, I can move over here and see that at the moment my pit gain is 0 0.8 cubic meters. And now I reached one cubic meter, so now I'm closing my BOP. And I'm doing a, I had a very short flow check there as well. And now I'm waiting for my influx to stop. Uh, and when it's uh, stopped, here we see my influx rate and it went to zero and so now it started the drillers method. And as I already kind of mentioned that we have benchmarked uh, the, 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 the pressures in the, in the well and the surface pressures towards other models but also a lot to real time uh, or the real situations and spent a lot of time on that. So the goal of, for us here is to be able to do simulations that are realistic. And by using the models, we are able to do very realistic simulations. Uh, but, uh, and I'm going to talk a bit about that in, in, after we have finished the simulation about the improvements to make it even better and what we are thinking about to do uh, are doing now in 2017. Uh, so what we see here, 
you, you have, most of you have seen this already. Uh, now we see that my gas is kind of getting up and exiting the well. I got an increase in my flow return here, and I also see my gas is exiting the well. Uh, I think I'm just going to kind of go through the points for 2017 uh, because there are some issues by kind of doing this is what we are talking about here is to do automatic calibration and when we talk about automatic calibration that is towards uh, to get the real downward pressures while you are kind of uh, could get the real ESD but also the ECD so you get you have the correct pressures in the well prior to the influx but also during the influx and and the and next thing is to do also automatic calibration of the slow circulation rates to get the proper uh, friction factors of your uh, shock line and also kill line if you use that and, and today we can do uh, we, we already do a calibration on that and you can do it manually but our goal for this year is to make it automatically so you can kind of just write in this is the this is the slow circulation rates that we had on the rig and the system the model will be automatic calibrated to give you that realistic pressures because we are modeling uh, not only the well but we are also modeling inside the choke line, the kill line, and the Kelly line. So we have uh, all uh, everything is kind of settled for us to have spot on pressures to what you have in the well. And the next thing is also that we would like to have uh, fixed that we have automatic adjustment of circulation rates to avoid fully open choke during circulation. And as you probably maybe noticed here that we can set up circulation rates and when we're doing the drill loss method, we have a circulation rate for the initial circulation, but we also have when we do the kill mode. And we could also do some other stuff when on the weight and weight method, where we can have a certain volume we will pump uh, at a certain rate and another uh, circulation rate afterwards. But we would like to kind of automatically uh, uh, set the circulation rates to avoid a fully open choke so you don't lose the control of your well. And the third thing here and the well control uh, part of it is also manage pressure drilling as a startup condition uh, and also as a, a kill method as well uh, because we, do, we know that uh, more and more of our customers are using managed pressure drilling as a, a method in their operation and are in MPD mode when they do this happen. So it's quite important for us to kind of also follow what's happening in the market. And the next thing is uh, not directly to the kind of the well control evaluation module, but it's more into the real-time system where we do automatic detection of influx parameters. So if you're running our real-time system and you get an influx and you close in your well, uh, we will then calculate uh, what kind of influx you, uh, or the size of the influx you have, and then do, be able to do an automatic well control evaluation simulation. And, and in this way, you don't need to spend a lot of time preparing for doing the simulation. You just run it automatically, and it gives you a very quick input to the what kind of kill method you should use and how you should do it. Uh, and then over for the last or the fourth kind of spotlight that we have is the lie well support. And this is also one thing that we have been talked about earlier and we have been doing it for a while and, and, and we had a, even a separate webinar about lie well support. Uh, and as you understand that is that we do a service uh, where we do kind of uh, drilling consultancy and service designed to advise and support drilling analysts, engineers, and drillers to optimize drilling performance, to reduce the non-productive time, uh, and also with an increased, increased focus on safety. So what we are using here is that we use the wellhead and the well planner tool. And, and not to confuse you too much, the wellhead is the real-time system and the well planner is the offline simulator tool. And we use real-time systems to do real-time simulations, real-time diagnostics, but we also use the well planner to do forecasting on the site to kind of look ahead next 24 hours, what is the operational look, how will the operation look like in the next day, 
uh, what uh, is the issues we will see, are we still on plan, is the plan still valid, and, and so on. So, <clears throat> and here is also kind of where we are heading in this way. We are, uh, and uh, this is kind of with a very high focus on the real-time, the well-ahead system. And, and here again, automatic calibration of the models. And again, as I just mentioned, the automatic detection of influx parameters. And then we look even further with automatic update of well configuration data. And we are already working with a lot of customers with kind of where we interface their systems to get the configuration, the well configuration uh, automatically. But we also kind of, uh, instead of do a import when you trigger it, we would like to do it automatically. We would do checks if there are changes, do we need to take it and, and do use the last, the latest and greatest data uh, all the time. That's that's the goal there. And also to do the forecast simulation automatically. Instead of running that on the side manually in the well planner tool, we are looking at uh, being able to run forecasts in the wellhead systems. So you can set up uh, forecast uh, parameters that will be triggered and run uh, when you want to do it. We're also looking at the automatic tuning of hook loads during tripping. So we, we are looking at the, some, some improvements on the hook load calculations that we do. Uh, not that the calculations will be better, but the results is, will, will be easier to use for the uh, users. And I think maybe the, the most important point here is uh, making it less depending, dependent on people make the system more and more automatic or autonomous to be able to run without kind of using a lot of service personnel to run it. We would like to kind of be able to give uh, an advantage to the customers without kind of bringing too much extra cost. Uh, yeah, I, I just put in this uh, contact information in the PowerPoint slide. Uh, so you will have it. So if you have any questions or comments uh, later on, you can just email uh, Tony or, or me with anything. Uh, and then in the end, I would like to, is there any questions? And I see, uh, yes, there are a couple of questions. And I see, yeah, uh, first question. So, when are you releasing the well construction uh, module or the thing that you're doing? Um, uh, yes. <laughs> Good question. Uh, yeah, and, and when it comes to the well construction or the, or the, 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 the casing design part, it's, it's still in an early phase uh, in the development. And this is something that we have kind of been triggered by the need of some of our clients. And, and we are... Uh, our goal is to have an initial release within 2017. So this is something that we are working uh, to, to release within this year. Yeah, being in being in the kind of the architectural design phase, working with the customers, we should know uh, a couple of months from now when that will be. But as for today, uh, that's what Morten said. And another question about the well construction part. Uh, <clears throat> where does the well construction fit into your products? And that's a good question, actually, because we, as you probably, all, most of you know, we, 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 we do a lot of hydraulic and torque and drag simulations in, in planning phase and also in the training part of the, of the crews and in the rhythm operations. But we feel that it's a quite natural expansion of our the well planning part that we are working on that you, you were able to, to do uh, the well construction as well. And there's, uh, I think there will be a room for even more modules in the future, but uh, the well construction or the, the casing design part is something that we have uh, had a lot of questions of, and that is something that we have prioritized to do for now. And, and of course, when you look into kind of a, also as a, Part I mentioned earlier about the non-stop solution that you you go into one tool uh, to 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 do the most of your well design. That is also natural for us to go that way. So um, no, we have uh, actually uh, been talking for thirty minutes, and that was the plan. 
so I think we will cut the webinar now. Uh, so, but again, please feel free to send Tony and or me an email. And I would like to thank Tony for uh, joining with with me in this webinar. And I would like to t thank you all for joining us. And uh, hope you have a nice day. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye, bye, guys. Hands first.